garden of Eden, it failed. In other words, for a seed to be successful, it must germinate. After germinating, it must grow. After growing, it must produce. And therefore, Adam the first could not produce because he failed. When something fails, it means the process has been cut short. The process has been cut short. Therefore, that one now comes to make a conclusion that the first seed, which is Adam the first, failed in the garden called Eden. It was planted in the garden called Eden. And the purpose of God to plant this seed, it was to make sure that the seed can germinate and seed can also flourish and give fruit. But for that reason, Adam failed. And one thing that you need to know as a child of God, as a man of God, as a believer, any time the first seed, any time the first seed fails, and when the first Adam fall, God was to use also the seed. God was to use the seed uh, for restoration. If a seed falls, another seed comes for restoration. The first Adam failed. When Jesus came, he came as the seed of a woman. And he came to restore what the first seed could not restore. And therefore, I declare to somebody tonight that you have Jesus, the son of the living God, who is the perfect seed that came to restore what Adam the first had lost in the hands of the enemy, Satan. And therefore, because one seed fall and it was not successful, therefore God is looking for what we call the perfect seed. And the perfect seed cannot fall. The perfect seed could not submit to temptation. In Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter number 4, when Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he came into a place of temptation, the Bible says he never submitted to temptation. But the first man, Adam, submitted to temptation of the devil. And that is the difference between the first Adam and the second Adam. We are falling in the class of the first Adam because he fall. Now that's why we as the Adam, if we come from the bloodline of Adam, we fall together with him. But God had mercy on us. God is God of mercy. If you're close to somebody, you can tell him, God is God of mercy. He could not allow you and I to continue suffering in our fall. The Bible says he saw our state and he knew there is something that he can do to rescue us and become perfect. And that's why you and I, we are perfect in Christ. Because Jesus, the second seed, which is perfect seed, we are perfected in it. Because the Bible says, if my words remain in you, and I remain in you, it means the first seed, it must connect to the perfect seed in order for it to be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of John chapter number 12, John chapter 12 verse number 24, I'm talking about the perfect seed of God. The Bible says, Verily, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now, when Jesus was talking about this, he was talking to the disciples. He was giving them a parable.
This is a parabolic statement. Jesus was speaking of himself. Himself being a seed. And he knew when a single seed falls on the ground and it dies. Remember Jesus left the higher kingdom. And he came down here through the commission of the father to come and die on the cross. And after death, he was buried in the soil. And that one you need to understand when he was buried in the grave, uh, that is the fulfillment of the seed that is single seed falling on the ground and dies. And when it died, the Bible says even those people that died many years ago, when Jesus resurrected, even those people resurrected with the Lord Jesus. Which means when a single seed falls on the ground and it dies, it does not remain a single seed. It, remain, it multiplies. So you and I, we are the product of the second seed, which is the perfect seed of the Lord. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's himself speaking about it in the book of John chapter 12 verse number 24. When he says, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat, wheat representing the seed, unless it falls on the ground and dies, if it doesn't die, it cannot multiply. The reason why we are not multiplying it is because we are not ready to die. The Bible says, uh, when we were baptized into the Lord Jesus, we put on his garment. We died with him and we resurrected with him. And therefore, this one means any man who has died and resurrected with Jesus Christ, he cannot remain without productivity. You will have production because you've been in a place of production. That is a place of production. If you die, something will germinate out of you. The Bible says in the book of Job, when there is hope for a tree that has cut, that, that has been cut, if it sends water, it will sprout again. The tree will sprout again. Why is the tree sprouting again? Because it has sensed water. Water is very important. And here the Bible says, when a single kernel of wheat falls on the ground and it dies, it cannot afford to remain single. I declare to somebody tonight, you need Jesus and you need to receive him in order for you to become productive in your area of life and also in kingdom assignment. I declare your ministry is resurrecting in the name of Jesus. I declare your family is resurrecting in the name of Jesus. I declare by the power that is invested over this word that God through Jesus, when Jesus died, he never resurrected alone. He resurrected with other saints who had already died. And the Bible says it will never remain alone. It produces many seeds all over the world when we walk around. We have a lot of people called Christians. In other words, they are called Christ-like. They are people who carry the attribute and the character of Jesus because they died and resurrected with him. Therefore, tonight, there is a perfect seed of God that you and I, we shall be made perfect in it. Somebody say amen. The enmity between the seed of a woman and Satan is manifested in the book of Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, And appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head of twelve stars, a crown of twelve stars, and she was being with a child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon having seven heads and ten horns, the seven crown upon his, upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. For, for to devour, the, to devour her, her child as soon as she gave birth. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations. If that is your Bible, you can write a man who was to rule all nations. With the rod of iron and her child caught up unto God in his throne. Somebody say amen. In Revelation chapter, chapter number 12, we are seeing a sign appeared in heaven that a woman clothed with the sun and moon. When we go to the book of Luke, that woman is the woman.